Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a friendly, warm vermicompost community, you are in the right place. Today we're outside because it's a lovely day and we have been cooped up inside for so long here in the Midwest that I thought I would take the Red Wigglers on a road trip outside for you guys and show you basically the best system that I have found for areas that are small. So we have our red wigglers in here and I just wanted to show you that this system is about 16 inches by 16, actually it's about 16 and a half by 16 and a half and I'll put the metric over there up front. Um, but basically this is the best system for being in small areas and not only that, it is really, really tidy. So you can see that everything has its own label. It's got a lid. And so what we're going to do today is I'm just going to show you how clean you can be with a worm farm. I know you guys have seen me if you've been in this channel for a really long time. You've seen me up to my elbows in worm castings and worms, but it's not necessary. Everybody, you know, some people are like, ew, and other people are like, yay. But if you're one of those people that would really rather just the worms do their job and you have minimal inputs, this is actually a really good system for you. Even the crows think so because they're mouthing off right now. So anywho, I'm gonna bring you up close here and I'm gonna show you how nice and tidy this whole thing can be. Okay, here we are at the top level and this is the foraging level where everybody is trying to finish up all of the, the hard pieces. I'm just gonna start pulling these off. These are not gonna these are pineapple leaves and they're not going to finish up anytime soon. So as I find them, I'm just going to pull these off so that they can go to the feeding zone. And then we're going to look and see how close this thing is to getting finished up. Some of the other feedings that I've had have actually finished up a lot faster than these guys. So I'm a little disappointed that I'm not going to get a harvest this time, but that's okay. Worms do what they want and honestly, you need to work at their schedule. So one of the things that I wanted to show you about how nice and small and tidy this can be, you don't actually have to do this part where I'm picking through. You could just leave this alone and walk away. You don't need to, to fiddle with this layer at all because this is the foraging layer and I'm just doing this because, well, I have a worm channel and even if I didn't, I'm a little nosy. But if you're not, and you don't mind just leaving the worms to do whatever they're gonna do, then you don't need to actually mess with this. You just have to wait for it to be finished. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna put this into a bus tray. I have links to these in the Amazon links below, but they fit exactly inside those bus trays. And so you are not going to Get this on your carpet, get this on your floor. You could just put this in your closet if you wanted to. And these little guys are not gonna run amok. You're not gonna have any problems with them at all, actually. Now this is the feeding area. And you can see we fed a little bit of uh, tomato skins or tomatoes, I'm not sure which. But you can still see the bedding in here. So this one is not anywhere near done. So this is actually the layer that we're going to feed again today so that all the nice juicy feedings are going to make them want to eat all the bedding and stuff like that. But I'm willing to bet we will be able to harvest the top next time. And then this will become the foraging area. So it looks like they do have some things left over, but not a lot. So that's good. And then I'm gonna neatly pick this up and put this on the other one, and I've made no mess at all. This is actually a tray that has never been fed people food before. This is only bedding. It's never had any worm chow. It has never had any people scraps. It is just bedding. And then whatever good stuff has dripped from above. So if I've given an especially wet feeding, it's dripped down into this. You can tell this has a lot more bulk to it still. And that's because the worms and their little buddies have not actually managed to reduce the bulk that much. But what they have done is a lot of pooping. Look at that. They're already making really great castings. And there's never been any food in this layer. In fact, I actually just saw a cocoon. So even though there isn't any food, they're still even having cocoons in this layer. 
and when we get down to this layer you're going to see I have these little risers that they are going to basically hold the weight of the above layers so that the plastic lives longer it doesn't come with those I made those myself and I'll put below what I made them out out of in metric and in imperial and then nice and neat I'm gonna pick that up and move that over and we're gonna come down to the next layer here that again has never had any people food in it it has only had just bedding and this is the com this all of the bedding here is the combination of paper cardboard and some coconut coir or peat um, just so that it doesn't stick together if you have uh, paper or cardboard in a bin it can clump together and make kind of a glue so that is why i do choose to put some sort of uh something now some people i think it was michael who said that i should try the wood chips that they have for wood burners um i think i haven't been able to find them around here lately i don't know if that's gone out of uh favor with the people here locally but i haven't been able to find the wood pellets but i imagine any kind of bedding you could get at a pet store would also work and nice and neat there we go moving down to this layer which is the very bottom layer that is nothing more than paper bedding it's a little bit damp here but not much now let's see if we've got any worms down here yep we do but this is meant to start to prevent you from having any kind of leachate in the bottom of the bin this is meant to be dry down here this isn't meant to be actual worm habitat this is meant to be nice and dry and absorb any of the wet feedings that may drip through. Okay, here we are down in the bottom sump area, which in theory, if you did not have nice, good areas for them to live, <clears throat> they come down here. I try to keep a little bedding down here just in case, but um, I would prefer they didn't come down here. But as I've always told you, worms do what they want. But when I find them down here, I do pick them up and I do move them back up because I have a sneaky suspicion if they stay down here for very long, considering how dry this is, they won't live very long in this system. There's a worm right there and a worm right there. And we're going to rescue those little buddies and put them in a bin that was higher up. But I am going to add just a tiny bit of water down here, just in case. Every time I come in here, I try and make sure that uh, if the worms do get down here, they're not going to die. So just, just a tiny little bit of water. That's probably only a couple spoonfuls. But hopefully it will rescue anybody who manages to get down here. I don't find that... I can't tell you that the worm tower doesn't work. But what I can tell you is that the worms do <clears throat> seem to come down here and not make it up. So if you have a system like this, put in the comments below, um, what do you do to ensure the worms go back up? Should I put more of this stuff in the bottom? I'm still pretty new at this system, so I'm not really sure. Put in the comments below what your opinion is. And so here we are, nice and neat. If this was inside my house, I could just take a towel and clean up the edges here and then reassemble the tower. We're not gonna do anything to this one here this one here I can just make sure that stays nice and clean this is that layer that has never been fed but looks almost done and again if you wanted to keep this tidy in your closet or something so far we're not making any mess whatsoever and then this is the feeding layer that we are going to give them some food Real quick, I did not want to uh, forget to tell you guys, I did get a pair of these garden shoes from High C, and I told them that I would give them a little um, shout out. They did give me these for free, and I did buy the unisex version. They do come in all sorts of cool colors, like little chickens and hearts and things like that. I'll put a link uh, up above. But one of the things I did want to tell you is that they are, they've got shoes and boots alike, but I like these shoes here, because a lot of times when I'm on my hands and knees, weeding this part is like so hard on other shoes but look at that it's nice and soft and 
completely washable. I've mowed the grass. I've been running around in them for a couple of months now. And I just wanted to let you know, you do get a discount and I will put all of that in the pinned comment below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put those pineapple leaves in here and I've got some kale for them and some onions and some apples and I think a banana. That should be enough for these guys. Um, I made some kimchi and I decided to put a little bit of kale in there to see if, I don't know, get me more vitamins or whatever, right? But none of these are forbidden food and um, you can kind of incorporate them into the castings just so that they get good contact so the worms can get in there. But honestly, you don't have to in this kind of a system because it is all sealed up because they're all nested together like Russian dolls. Then here we go, we've got the top layer here. Now one of the things that I've started doing to try and make sure that the worms are, I don't know, still interested in reducing things here is to uh, give them a little bit of worm chow. So it's got really good moisture still. So I'm just going to add a little bit of worm chow to the top and this is almost powdered. It's got um, wheat flour, rice flour. I think this even might still have some of the... Uh... So this worm chow is, is just got rice flour, whatever was expired in my friend Cece's cabinet. I found a bucket of dry goods that she had saved from me for almost a year ago. And uh, I just put that in the blender and blended it up. So this will make this part maybe a little bit more palatable for the worms so that they will chew this all up and we will get a harvest next time. So let me know if you have any questions below about the system and how it fits and how nice and clean it stays down in the comments below. All right, guys. Well, if you like this video, go ahead and give that a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. If you want to see more about the Worm Tower, I have a whole playlist right over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this right over here. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody. Have a good day.